In the previous tutorials we've looked at how to understand the box model and how that uh, certain elements automatically take up a rectangular box that goes for whatever width that you define them as or whatever width that they inherit. And what I want to do in this tutorial is to show you in a slightly different way how we can go about now floating those box uh, box models. Now what you see on your screen right now is a website called JSBin. It's one of several websites where you can go and just practice your code, work on things that you're not really sure of how they work, and, and you don't actually have to work in your browser where your code is, and you might make mistakes that mess things up. So whenever you're not sure about exactly what to do or how to do it, then you can come into a place like JSBin and there's some others. I'll show you one here, for instance, CodePen. CodePen.io is another great place to come and to practice with your, your coding. And we'll come back to JSBN because this is one I want to work on right now. When you come here, you're going to see this top bar asking you to upgrade to Pro, but for educational purposes, it's fine to just use it uh, for free. We're going to click this X, and pull this up. And I'm going to, let's see here, come in here and this is going to work just exactly the same way as it would work in brackets or any other good code editor. And what I mean by that is that in uh, JSBin we have Emmet style coding, so I can type it H1 and I'm going to put here floating boxes. And I need a CSS place, and I could come up and type it up here, but I'm going to use the feature that they have here. So I'm going to create a panel here on the left just for my HTML. This will be the CSS code. And then over here on the right, you'll see the output, like a live preview. So over here, I'm going to put in CSS. I'm going to put the H1, and I'm going to tell it that our H1 is going to have a, a border of 1px solid blue okay and it's going to take up 100 percent and i can resize this window if i want to see more of it and the same way over here if i want to see the code so below our h1 which is sort of names the page for us and the reason i did this first line is because it gives us a sense of what 100 percent is going to be that is taking up 100 percent i know it is i don't even have to measure it I don't have to type in with 100% because I know that the H1 element is going to take up 100% of the of the screen if it inherits its dimensions from the body uh, or the HTML element, and I know that that is. So right below the H1 over here, I'm going to type in a UL, and I'm going to give it those four LIs that we were looking at a while ago, and I'm going to do it just like Emmet. So I'm going to I'm going to type an LI, and then for the text of that LI, I'm going to put item. And then I'll put a dollar sign. And then I'm going to put times four, which tells Emmet how many list items to put and how to increment the numbers that'll go where that dollar sign is. And I'll hit tab. All right, so now you can see that I have four items in my list tab. And I'm going to come right below that. And I'm going to have a div element. And this div element, I need inside of that a paragraph. And inside of that paragraph, I want uh, a lorem of, let's say, hmm, how about 40 words? See if that's not too many. That might be a little many for the screen, so let's take it back to about 25 words. That might be a bit better. Now, I want to come up here to my CSS. In addition to the H1, I want to make sure that the, the div has a box around it. I want to make sure that the UL is showing its box so I can see all the dimensions of everything. Now I'm going to come down and what I want to do is to change the dimensions of these things. So I'm going to have the UL and the style rule for this is going to be that it's going to have a width of 25 percent and you should see now that it adjusts automatically so rather than being full width like it was it's now just 25 percent and I'm going to come to my div element and I'm going to say that it has a width of 75 percent 
And you can see that it does. And we may wonder, well, if this is only 25% and this is 75%, then why doesn't this boxed element here come up to beside this list item? Well, it might if we were to put float up here. We want to make sure that this element floats to the left. And now we see that the box below it does come up, but wow, it doesn't come up like we want it to because the, the browser is coding this right margin all the way over the same as the list item. And so it looks sort of crazy here. Well, let's come down and let's say that we want this to float to the left too. We don't want anything to the left of it. That's what we're saying with uh, this float. We don't want anything to the left of it. Okay. Well, that doesn't really help us, does it? Because we have 25 width, 75% uh, width here. What if we just made this uh, smaller, like 50%? Ah, now we see it's popping up. So there must be something about 25 plus 75 does not equal 100. So what about 74? No. 73? No. 72? 71? 70 percent how, how far we're we going to have to go you know, 65 percent look at that we're getting closer now now why is it doing this well it's because of the way that browsers calculate the width of these boxes you may tell it that it's only 75 percent wide or 25 percent wide but there are other things going on inside of that browser and the textbooks all tell you about this, the, the border box model and the content box model and how we have to go about um, styling these boxes if we want them to behave properly. Now, the way this is going to work, 75 plus 25 has got to be 100%. But the only way that we can get this to work is if we come in here and we put box sizing and then we're going to call the... Uh, value here uh, border box all right so box sizing border box but see now that controls this box here but it hasn't controlled this box down here if I were to come in here now and say how about 70% this time now it works remember before I had to get it down to like 65% so we know that this is working so what I have to do is come in here and bo uh, box Sizing, border, box, and now they pop up here side by side. Notice that the margins over here perfectly, that's 100%. These borders just overlap and touch, so that's uh, exactly right. This border over here, 25 plus 75 is 100%, and they line up together. Now, if we come in here below this uh, div, and we put in here that we want to have a footer and we want our footer to have the content of how about thanks for your business and let's come up here and give our footer a border as well then now we see that we have a problem and the problem is, is that the border around this footer, this border is overlapping, it's coming all the way up and taking over all of that as well. Sort of like a while ago when we had the, uh, the box here with the lorem ipsum and its right border came all the way over and touched the left margin. Now the footer uh, border is going all the way up and overlapping the one that's above it. So the reason this is doing this is because the footer right here, this footer is being influenced by these areas up above it that are floating. So what we have to do is we have to come in here and we have to tell our CSS that we want to clear all of the floats above it. So we're just going to say clear both. And now when we clear both, we see that now the footer is doesn't even begin and the top border of the footer area doesn't even begin until this uh, div with a paragraph over here 
uh, has finished. So it starts exactly where it should. So what we're learning here is that in order to reasonably work with floating boxes around on our screen, then you should always use the box sizing border box. Box sizing border box, because what this does, this tells the browser that when the browser goes to size this box, be sure that you take into account the borders and everything with these boxes. Because you see what's happening is that when the browser calculates the width for this box, it's not just calculating the width of the text and the content, because look here, there's space over here, isn't there? What we have is that the browser is having to calculate the width of the text, the padding between the text and the, the border, the width of the border itself. So I have one pixel of width here. I have one pixel of width over here, and that's having to be added. And so whenever you don't Whenever you use the, the regular way of calculating these things, uh, the, the default setting for browsers is what we call content box. Content. If I define content, I don't even need to put this in the code. If I uh, use a CSS code that says box sizing content box, I've just wasted my time because that's the way browsers work by default. But we want to change the behavior of the browsers and we want to say we want it to always take into account the math that includes the content plus the border and we call that border box. And then that way you're able to float your images and you can do the simple math of 75 plus 25 and you don't have to sit here and guess at it or do calculations to find out what size your borders need to be.